So the last video kind of blew up a bit. I didn't expect to get 500 views on that, but yeah, thanks honestly, that means a lot. Now for the most part, it received a positive reception, which is nice. I was kind of expecting most fanboys to just mass dislike it and shut it back down into like the YouTube dark web or whatever. But to my surprise, many uh, people have been kind of like in the know as to what Bungie has been doing and many fans have finally opened their eyes. So as more and more people are becoming aware of this, of this shitty practice that Bungie is still doing, it still pales in comparison to the amount of fanboys that still support the game. And you got a plethora of YouTubers and streamers still showing the game and many, many fanboys saying the game is saved, the game is great, the expansion is like the best thing in the world and all that. And I'm honestly just super confused as to how anyone thinks this expansion is actually good. Like y'all really need to stop defending this game because it's only going to hurt the game in the long run. Now a couple of things I didn't mention in my last review was all the new activities that they added and many were quick to note out that oh hey you missed a bunch of these activities and new mobs and whatnot. Um, and some of these new activities are like the legendary lost sectors, empire hunts, and exotic quests that are currently available like salvation script and the vanguard strikes like the glass way. But th these activities and quests still don't justify the $50 price tag. There's too little to be offered here and it just feels like a free update with the premium price tag slapped onto it. Legendary Lost Sectors is just you going through the Lost Sector on hard mode. These exotic quests are all the same as I mentioned before. It's just doing a bunch of boring steps and obtain the exotic afterwards. And the strike is probably the most confusing thing ever. Like why are the Vex here? What does this have to do with Europa in the first place? And the strike boss is just a large Hydra. Like, what is this, Pokemon? Everything's just being Dynamax all of a sudden? Fanboys were quick to mention that the new Vex enemies, or I should say, one new Vex enemy, but just one new enemy isn't enough considering the AI of enemies are also pathetic. It just falls flat. And again, one new Vex mob for $50. All of the Fallen are literal reskins, and there's no new Fallen enemy type. The new Pinnacle gear is just reskins of Beloved for some reason, like, if you look at the Adored Sniper, it's just literally beloved. And the total loot of new guns is just 31. And five of those are exotic weapons, not counting the duality, which is a season pass uh, exotic. And there still isn't any new weapon archetypes. Like, I don't know, they could have added crossbows or swords and shields. There's no dual wielding, no new melees like daggers, sights, just swords and a heavy slot. Like, nothing's being innovated here. And another sad thing is class exotics still have it to be returned. No exotic emblems either. Oh, but don't worry, Hawkmoon's coming back, so I guess everything is saved, apparently. Now, the other thing that really irks me is they keep on bringing back, right? Like, for majority of Destiny 2's lifespan, most of the content is older content and mechanics and whatnot from Destiny 1, right? You got the moon, Cosmodrome, random rolls on weapons again, old exotic armors like Graviton Forfeit, Helm of Saint 14. Like, when you compare new things added, it's not much. And usually, I don't have an issue with a sequel bringing things back from the prequel, right? But the issue is, the sequel must bring of equal value first. If you bring something old, make sure you bring in a lot of new too. At least with this DLC, the exotic armors are all new, which I will give Bungie props for because they didn't rip any D1 armors here for now. And that's really pretty much it. We've seen Bungie's going back to that route again as Hawkmoon's on new gun. Even if you get one to two new perks or additional ability, it's still Hawkmoon, which like, come on, really? Like what next? First curse is coming back to next season? And speaking of seasons, this shit is just outright depressing. So let's take a good look at this for a minute, all right? So the first thing is the free section will be available to all players for free. All players will have access to the Europa Free Roam, Cosmodrone, Seasonal Armor and Duality, Cosmodrone Strike, which is just a D1 strike, Lost Sectors on Europa and Cosmodrome, not the legendary Lost Sectors, but just the regular Lost Sectors, the 100 ranks of the Season Pass, Artifact Mods, Triumphs, Shaders and Emblems, I guess, and Iron Banner and Dawning, which these two don't count because Iron Banner is a monthly rotation and Dawning is just Christmas every year. Now when you look at the roadmap here, you got the Strike, the Empire Hunt, Trials, which got delayed again and does not count because it's a weekly rotation, and you also have the Rathborn Hunt. And that's honestly it. Raids are not out yet until this Saturday and dungeons don't have an ET at the moment. So you get access to three new activities, which are the Rathborn and Empire Hunt and the Glassway Strike. So off the bat, half the content in this roadmap is free and three new activities if you drop the 10 bucks. If you purchase Beyond Light, you get new subclass, the Ice Grenade Launcher, along with a campaign that no one cares about. Dawning and Iron Banner and Trials should not be here, as those are once again, rotating activities. So if we remove the free section, Dawning, Iron Banner, and Trials, what do we actually get? One, two, three, and the raid isn't out yet. Campaign and the Ice Class, and five exotics, which are new, but again, have the same tedious, boring grind as most quest exotics do. I also actually forgot to mention this in my last video. So if you have Beyond Light, you also have access to the new Ice subclass, right, Stasis. And once you have this subclass, you have a 100% advantage in Crucible over the free players. And players who did not purchase this DLC, officially making Destiny 2 Crucible pay to win. At least before, free players still had the chance to compete in Crucible with older Pinnacle gear, still being obtainable, and multiple legendary gears from previous seasons 
thousands offered for free. And of course, the old subclass ability still being relatively powerful and nothing too out of the line from one another. Here, Stasis just shreds Arc, Solar, and Void. If you have Stasis, you are at a 100% advantage. Now, fanboys say, hey, don't worry, they'll introduce a lot more content later throughout the seasons, but this is the day one experience. Why is the day one experience so lackluster? Are people this blindfolded? The exact same thing happened with Destiny 1, Destiny 2, Year 1. Again, it's happening here with Beyond Light. Day one experience has to be good. People have become so complacent over the years with patches and DLCs and updates to fix games. But what happened to games being good on day one? Destiny's not an early access game. It's not an MMO either. So what is happening? It took a two month delay for this. And again, I just don't understand why people defend this. You know, what was interesting was I was in a call with one of my IRL buddies and he's like a huge fan of the game. And he saw my video and he surprisingly liked it. And I asked him one night uh, what he was doing, right? And in a very exhausted voice, he said, I'm just grinding bounties over and over again for the raid. And this just hit me. Is all this grind and power reset just for the raid? Like, did Bungie purposefully half fast and nuke the game, or power level and gear, so we spent even more time regrinding it, just so players have a shot at being the raid day one? Like, think about this for a second. Each expansion comes out, and there's a new raid. Players have their power reset, and grind to the highest power they can, once again to do the raid day one. And the next expansion drops, higher power level, new raid, shadow keep dropped, power level grind, new raid. The next expansion drops, which is a higher power level and brings in a new raid. Shadow keep also dropped, power level grind again to do the new raid. Let's take Forsaken as an example. Had a pretty bland and predictable story, very boring story missions, new gear, new grind, and obviously a new raid. People grind as fast as they can through all the content just so they can get to the raid. Shadow keep dropped, it had a horrible story, more grind to do with new and easy boring activities and a new raid and once players are done with the raid it's just weekly activities all over again until next season what happens when you actually make content that is meaningful what happens when the story is actually challenging what happens when you actually make content that's meaningful what happens when the story is actually challenging and meaningful and delivers a good experience what happens when the activities are actually fun and not a snooze fest what happens when the world is dynamic and interesting players become more invested in the world itself rather than focusing on the raid and when players become invested in what is actually being offered the focus shifts but as of now, Destiny has never delivered a solid campaign. It never delivered a solid world building experience. They only offer raids. So has the game been dumbed down just for players to grind for the raids easier? Do we always drop $60 for a raid? And you know what I could get for 60 bucks? All of these games. It's just unthinkable as to how anyone would even consider this a solid experience. In for 10 bucks for a season pass. I would rather buy myself Halo Reach. It's a fully fledged campaign and a multiplayer. Even more insane is the fact that this game on launch day for Beyond Light was also the highest earning game on Steam. And at the moment, it sits comfortably at the number four spot in top games on Steam charts. Now, if you actually look at stats for Steam charts, if you go way back to October of last year, you see a very high spike in players. When Shadow Keep dropped in October, the game had about 170k players or so averaging, right? Then all of a sudden, once November arrived, most of the game's content dropped, like the raid, dungeons, etc. The game saw a huge decline in players during November 2019 to January 2020. Only a small spike in March when the new season launched, and again, dropped in players until next season. Then from July all the way to November, the game was at a huge decline before Beyond Light dropped. Peak players have not been broken since last year, which is almost 300,000. See a common pattern here, if you can't notice it. New content drops, people play it and beat it, then dip. Remiss repeat. It's not looking good. You can see a steady decline in players. Give it another month and the average player will dip down to 40 or 50k again. Now, does this mean the game will die? Obviously not. There are a lot of fanboys and YouTubers showing the game. It's clear the game will maybe last another two years or so until maybe they release Destiny 3 or a new IP. But yeah, honestly, this is just a scam. Save your money. Cyberpunk 2077 is coming now in just a few weeks. Aim the next gen consoles are here. There will be a plethora of Christmas sales going on soon as well. So this just is not worth the buy. Anyways, guys, that's just my opinion on the issue. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, share if you want, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.